Hello, I'm Michael Pierce, and this is The Human Condition. Our topic today is going to make a lot of people angry. We're talking about gut flora. I'm going to talk about gut flora and how there's a controversial way to get control of it, and I'll show you how to do it in just a few minutes. Gut flora is a topic that I've worked with for a long time with a lot of people, and I used to really struggle with it. I worked with a lot of patients that had problems with their depression and anxiety, which responds very well to gut flora work, by the way. And the literature is quite clear that when a person has depression or anxiety, that their gut flora can play a large role in how their brain works. And likewise, correcting gut flora will make a person a lot better in many cases without drugs. That's not true for everybody, and this is not medical advice. However, what is gut flora? Gut flora is the bacteria and other organisms that live inside your intestines. There's more gut flora or gut cells inside our intestine than there are cells in our whole body. These dark travelers that travel with us are pretty important and they provide their own personality. They make for cravings, they manufacture vitamins, they help us fight infections, and they even contribute to our mood. So balancing gut flora is pretty important. And in today's world, there are a lot of companies out there that are even testing gut flora in the stool. They're testing the tablet of gut flora in the urine, and they're testing the genes of gut flora, and they're testing your own genes, your SNPs, to see what your tolerance is to different vitamins and minerals and nutrients. So it's very possible to get lost in this world of gut flora. It's very possible to get so mired in how to replace prebiotics and probiotics. And so let me talk about what those are. Prebiotics and probiotics are the things that make up the gut flora and its fuel. A probiotic is a healthy gut bacteria that is a actual bacteria. So when you eat a bacteria that's freeze dried in a pill or somehow encapsulated and eat fermented food or anything that is a live culture or a freeze dried culture, that is a probiotic. A prebiotic is the fuel for those bacteria to make them give them something to eat. When you eat those things, you are fostering the ecology of your gut. You're making it a safe place for them to grow and you're making it a place that's not as friendly for the other bad bacteria and bad fungi and other organisms like viruses to grow. What we want to do is we want to have a lot of very diverse good bacteria. We don't want just one or two good bacteria. We want many thousands of species, more than thousands of species to live and thrive and, and work in different parts of the intestine. The small intestine and the large intestine is completely different. Some people will even get lost in figuring out which gut flora should be used for the large intestine or the small intestine. Like for example, Lactobacillus plantarum. It's one of the organisms that's very good for the large intestine, but not so much for the small intestine. And there's many other Lactobacilli. There's also kind of a famous tactic of looking at the ratio of Firmicutes to Bacteroidetes species. And these are species of Archibacteria, or very, very old bacteria. These are genetically extremely old bacteria, and they have a balance in your gut. There are lots of doctors that will give people all kinds of special products. They often use things like Lactobacillus GG, which is the capital letter GG. There are many, many others. I'm not, not going to name them all. But the general concept was to give people a diverse set of probiotics and rotate them. In the old days, when I was doing this, I would have people rotate through different brands. I would have them get a, a brand that might have eight probiotics in it, and another one that might have a different six, and another one that had a different 15. Just many, many, many kinds of probiotics, and my strategy was to rotate every couple of days to try a new probiotic. And some people did very well with that. A few did very poorly because they couldn't handle the change. The change would give them bloating and gas and, and, and swelling of their abdomen. And that's usually called SIBO or CIFO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So it turns out that it's kind of a little known problem that some apparently good probiotics and prebiotics can be given to people and they're considered healthy generally, but they foster the growth of SIBO, which is the explosion of bacteria that came up from the large intestine into the small intestine. They migrated upward and they thrived on sugars, they thrived on things that they weren't supposed to have, and they just had a party in a neighborhood they weren't supposed to be in. And so that was kind of the problem of SIBO. So you can't always just rely on a FODMAP diet, which is a very common diet that's given for SIBO, and trust that it'll be fine. Because there are fibers and there are probiotics and bacteria, even healthy ones, that some people will react to and it will make their SIBO worse. So if you're one of those people that's tried all the healthy bacteria and all the healthy probiotics and you bloat within three hours of a meal, you might have SIBO. 
There's a breath test for SIBO, and it's not very accurate. There's a sample where they send a cable down your intestine and take a, a sample of the bacteria in your intestine, and they count how much bacteria is down there, and they try to figure out if you've got SIBO. I don't think it makes sense to fight with a medical diagnosis unless you're deathly ill and you need you know, antibiotics or prescription drugs. If you're dealing with the everyday kind of SIBO, in my view, it seems like it makes more sense to just starve the little buggers. That means cut the carbs. So for me, the shortcut to all this, and I learned a whole lot about doing this and I got very good at it, but I abandoned it all when I went to more low carb, ketogenic, ketoish, fasting and carnivore diets and carnivore-ish diets and all of that kind of stuff. I found that it really wasn't that much of a problem. So I found that the more I got people on a high fat diet, certainly more protein, but generally a lot more fat, supported their gallbladders and got rid of the carbs, they were able to starve away most of the bad bacteria and their balance came around very, very quickly. They didn't need much supplementation. They didn't need a bunch of terribly high level brain damage of thought. They didn't need all of that wrangling with what probiotic should I take and which one should I use and oh, my guts are tore up because what was usually tearing up their guts was all those fibers, all those lectins, all those phytates, phytic acids, which are again, binders, anti-nutrients. These are all anti-nutrients in plants that cause problems with people's immune systems and gut lining and inflammation and leaky gut syndrome. So. The real short answer for you and for me was to really reduce plant foods as much as possible. It's not to say that you can't eat any plant foods, but we wanna reduce some of those. So helping the gut flora you can do by giving a person generally more fat and what kind of more fat? Well, we don't really wanna give the standard American diet of PUFAs, which is the heart healthy diets and the diabetic healthy diets, which really aren't healthy. They cause problems with insulin imbalance and that's high omega-6 seed oils. So you want to give more omega-3 oils or grass-fed meat. You wanna give things that are more saturated fat instead of polyunsaturated fat. And I know that sounds anathema for most of you because we've been brainwashed by the food industry and by captured agencies. And it's time to throw that off and really get to the real science and understand how actual human bodies work and how the cholesterol system works. You know, it'd be really nice if the body was just so simple that we just the old idea that we just pour fat down our gullet and we get fat, fatty clogged arteries. It doesn't work that way. We get fat in our arteries, we get cholesterol clogged arteries and plaque arteries and widow maker arteries in our hearts from carbs. It comes from high fructose corn sweetener, it comes from sweetened beverages, it comes from sweetened drinks, it comes from sweetened foods, it comes from man-made manufactured and refined grains and carbohydrates, and it's very easy for us to get rid of that. So we have to face the piper and we have to really do the due diligence and the work to get over our own carb addictions and our own habits and give up those seductive carbs, especially the refined processed carbs. There is a bit of a debate for some people about whether they should have raw fruits and honey. You know, for me, I really let each patient figure it out and try it out on their own. It depends whether they have a candida problem, which is a, a thrush or a, a problem of fungus growing in their intestine or their mouth or their vaginal tract. These are really common types of things that happen to people. And there are all kinds of very vigorous candida diets where people try to figure out what's going on and they do different foods. There are many books that were written decades ago about candida diets, and I really threw them all away when I started doing the animal-based diets because I just didn't need them anymore. The candida just went away. You starve the little buggers, the little bacteria and the, the, the dysbiotic bacteria, the bad bacteria, just by starving them of carbohydrates and they get much, much better. Perhaps the most important fats in that case are the short chain fatty acids like butyric acid, which is in butter and other types of fats and foods. And there are uh, short chain fatty acids that feed the healthy bacteria. There are certainly benefits to long chain fatty acids too, and that's for another video. So just realize that we'd like to have reduced seed oils, we'd like to have reduced omega-6 oils, we'd like to have reduced lectins and carbohydrates, and I think that it's important that really it doesn't take a lot of work. We really just need to not eat certain things and eat a few other things, and, and mostly that's getting rid of our refined carbohydrate processed food diet. And don't forget the additives and preservatives because we have no idea what those and the GMOs do to your gut flora. Actually, we do. There was some research that showed that it did some terrible things, which we'll do in another video. That's gut flora. Thank you.